So my name is uh, Thomas Boudier. I'm an associate professor in uh, Central Mediterranean uh, on the newly installed uh, campus in uh, Nice. Actually, there's only three uh, associate professors there, me in uh, computer science, uh, one in uh, mathematics and one in uh, physics, and also uh, naturally joined the Morphin team. Uh, we have a, you know, a common uh, team on topic of interest about uh, 3D, but uh, biomedical image analysis. So my early days, uh, so uh, at the beginning of my uh, career, uh, I started to, to work more on uh, image processing, mostly like uh, electron microscopy, uh, more particularly 3D electron microscopy, uh, electron tomography. So I want a detail here, but you can have uh, you can ask questions about this uh, later. But the main, uh, the two uh, words I would like to highlight is uh, 3D. I started to work on 3D data. So now it's a bit difficult to go back to 2D data. Anyway, biology is 3D, so I quite of, try to focus on 3D data. And also I discovered that if you want to, to work with biologists and to discuss with biologists, you must uh, not talk about algorithm, but uh, tools. So uh, naturally I developed tools for 3D uh, image analysis in uh, biology. So after when I became uh, independent, I worked more on 3D fluorescence microscopy. So that it's a bit more interesting in terms of uh, question uh, you can ask for biology. And it's kind of the main, uh, main application for uh, biology. If you ask question about uh, cells, uh, tools, nuclei, basically uh, they use uh, tr uh, fluorescence microscopy. Uh, so this thing is should uh, turn. So basically, this thing in red, you cannot really see, but it's, uh, it's okay, it's not so. I can show you the video later. Ooh. So basically, in red, you have one, one, uh, one neur neur neuron, uh, and then in green, you have the output of all the neurons around, because the, the, the brain is very crowded. So we segment one neuron in red, and then to try to associate uh, the input from the over green neurons to the to the red neurons so the question was more like to so, so to detect of course uh, I, I will not uh, detail the segmentation uh, to detect the, um, the neurons and then do the association oops sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> so, so first we wanted to have some uh, statistical uh, value of significance because there are so many uh, uh, input so the question was uh, is this because there are so many the, the connection is just a uh, random and then uh, just uh, the neuron won't do anything uh, special to connect to the other neurons so we use uh, the tools of uh, uh, spatial uh, statistics so basically we compare the, the distances between the the input of the green and input of the red inside our model and then we uh, we just uh, shuffle the, the red. So we put the red everywhere with the same density, but almost everywhere, and compare the distances between our model and uh, our data. And then with the classical tools of uh, statistical uh, analysis, uh, we can show here that uh, there is something that uh, push one neuron to connect to the, uh, to the input of the other neuron. It's not a random, but something attracting one neuron to the other neuron. Uh, that makes sense, actually but wanted to confirm this. To continue on spatial organization, so this thing should turn also, but we can see most of the most of it. So here's the islet of Langerhans. So this mini organ is uh, involved in the production of uh, insulin. So it's uh, quite important. And of course, uh, when you have diabetes, there's a problem with this, uh, with this organ. So in this organ, there are three uh, types of cells alpha, beta, gamma, or, or red, green, and blue, whatever. And the question was, uh, what happens if the organization of the, the cells is different? So, so basically, in, in two different species, uh, monkey and mice, the organization is completely different, and the response to uh, glycemia is completely different between monkey and mice. So from this, we segmented the three uh, different types of cells. We build a graph of uh, interaction. So we detect the cells, so we get all the information within each cell, and then we have the neighborhood, neighborhood cell. So we can build a graph. 
when you have a graph of interaction, compute how many uh, green cells are next to a blue cell, uh, blah, 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 blah. And the, with the same ID, we shuffle the, the green and the, the blue because the red is on uh, a lot of red, so we don't switch them. Uh, yeah. So we shuffle the type of cell and then we compute the interaction uh, within our model and the random model. And basically, the, just a simple idea is that if the green cells are randomly organized, it's easier for them to contact the, the, the red cell. And so this is, uh, this is what we, we show. And actually, the red cells are kind of uh, controlling the production of the beta cell. The beta, the beta cell, the red cell, will produce the insulin. So this is just to show that for organization, with just changing organization, the behavior of the organ may, may change. So, so it was uh, two colors, three colors. Now it's like uh, 40, 41 uh, colors. So it will get a bit more complicated. Uh, so for this uh, for this kind of analysis, uh, we have uh, 31 uh, type of cell. So to do this, we still have five colors, but using combination, we can get 30, uh, 31 uh, combination, 35, uh, 31 uh, type of cell. So this is uh, lung, and all what you see is a metastasis from a primary to more. So the primary, from the primary tumor, uh, cancer tumor, of course, uh, some cells will uh, go in the blood and then uh, just uh, end, end up in the liver and the lung. And this one cell can grow into a metastasis, and this is wh what we see here. So, okay, so we did the detection of uh, these uh, 40, 41 uh, clones. So basically, just to explain, so we have uh, five uh, channels, five uh, colors. So we have one clone with only one color. We have five clones with only uh, five colors. With oh, sorry, one colors, and one combination of two, three, and four colors. We have many over uh, many combinations, so uh, over many uh, cell types. So we can get up to uh, 31 uh, cell type uh, with this uh, technique. So this one is the original image that we record, that we acquire from the microscope. From this, we extract in the different uh, uh, colors. Uh, the different uh, cells. So this now is the, uh, we assign the, the number between 1 and 31 to get the cell type. And this is just the cell aggregates. So for each cell aggregates, we have the, the composition inside each cell of regret, how many uh, cell, the cell of type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, 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 blah and, so, and so on. So from this, we can do a basic, uh, a basic measurement uh, like we want to see if the, the 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 clone number thirteen is more present in all the metastases, or if the if there's a, the clone number thirteen is there also the clone number two, or and so on and so on. So we are, want to have some idea if there's some uh, specific uh, localization of different clones inside the different metastases. So here we see two different organs. So on the left is the liver. On the right is the lung. So on the liver, you see it's uh, quite easy. Uh, it's uh, each metastasis. It's only one color, so one uh, one clone. So nothing to say. Uh, uh, but on the in the lung, each uh, each cell aggregate is composed of many many uh, cell uh, cell clones. So we analyze inside uh, each cell aggregate what are the most uh, present uh, clones on the if, if the one clone is uh, always with another, because maybe because there are a lot of cell interaction, and so we wanted to build kind of the graph of cell interaction with each uh, metastasis. So this this um, this is a summary of all uh, what happened in the metastasis in the in the lung. So I'm not sure you, you can read, but the big one in the center is uh, the clone number 13, that is uh, present almost everywhere, and the one on the right is the clone number two. So that means that when there is 13, there's always two, more or less. But the, the, the volume of 13 is always more than the volume of two. So that means something is between, happening between these two, uh, these two clones. And the biologists, they use these two clones and do a more uh, further uh, bio biological analysis. So just rapidly, another application uh, with some, uh, uh, some nuclei. 
So what you see here on top, it's uh, just uh, one nuclei. On the different colors here, it's not for cell type, it's the chromosome, okay? So the 23 uh, chromosome. So we wanted to, to do the, the same, uh, same idea by shuffling the position of chromosome uh, to see if it's the position is completely random or there's something that push one, uh, one chromosome to be there or next to another one and so on and so on. So on top is the uh, actual uh, organization, uh, below it's a random organization. Actually, uh, yeah, no, what I like in, bio, in biology is like the title of the article just give you all the information you need. Chromosome dis distribute randomly to, but not within, uh, nuclear lobes. So in the nuclei, there are different uh, areas, different lobes. So with this, we can show that the, the chromosome may be randomly inside each uh, lobe, but within the lobe, some prefer to be at the periphery or some prefer to be at the center of each lobe. Uh, okay. So now all these uh, tools are available into uh, um, package. So all these tools are available as uh, uh, individual plugins. So it's a suite uh, with many, many plugins. It's for uh, image for people who, who know this uh, software. So here I want to show that uh, all the program is uh, quite uh, modular. So I try to focus on everything very specific, very uh, organized. Uh, so it, it takes some time <laughs> to make something like this. So thanks to this, uh, can uh, make it the tools more uh, easy to use. Uh, more robust and uh, uh, more, use, uh, more usable. And so the tools are organized. The, now we can organize the data. So thanks to Omero. So Omero is just an image database. So, so we organize, so I push the biologists to organize their data into a database. So here we have all the images, all the information about the images. And then from this, uh, thanks to the, the tools I develop, I develop some uh, workflow. So the basic uh, cl classical workflow in image processing, filter, uh, threshold, uh, label, uh, measure. Of course, we can uh, add some uh, deep learning somewhere here. Uh, so this is a typical uh, workflow. So what I wanted to, to say, to, to do is uh, the, the simplest <laughs> text, the, the simplest workflow for biology so we can understand and modify this if they want. Just the name of the, the the process, the parameters, and that. Uh, you can see below, uh, like a uh, question mark image, it's just the, the, the name of the current image being processed. So we have everything we, we need. We can run, and then so it will take the, uh, the raw data, process the, the, the data, and then uh, put also the result of analysis inside the database. So we have everything in, in one place. So the good thing of a database, it's that you can uh, use the database from everywhere, for example, Python or R, especially if you want to do some uh, analysis. So this is uh, quite automatic. I just give, uh, I want an analysis for this data set here, and uh, the, maybe the name of the measurement and that's it. So it was a good idea because the biologists, they change their mind like uh, 20 times. So I had to run the, uh, the, the workflow like 20 times, but just uh, press the button and it, it was done. So conclusion before the research project. Uh, so what I did was uh, making bricks uh, for processing and analysis uh, biomedical images. And then from the bricks, I can build, uh, can build uh, pipelines. But what I discovered during this presentation is like the pipeline, the construction of the pipeline is still a manual. I, I have to do this, uh, talk to the biologists. But I guess we can do better than this. <laughs> so because most of the biology we study, the structure and the questions are more or less the, the first organization is more or less the same. Uh, you have some nuclei within a cell and the cell is part of the tissue and then you have some, something between the cell and so on and so on. So the organization is mostly similar. The analysis is a lot similar between the, the experiences, the experiments. We want to number something, the distance between something and some, something, and intensity of uh, some, somebody. So everything is kind of uh, repetitive. So the idea is, can we make uh, this uh, a bit more uh, automated? So before doing this, uh, the, the, the two uh, test cases for, for this in the, in, the, in the team, the test case, first test case will be like a, a histopathology, so it's 2D, but okay. Huh? 
Uh, so, so here it's nice because uh, this kind of uh, images is uh, the organization is very uh, well organized, very well described. The organization is quite uh, typical. Uh, the cells are, in, are we, uh, around the, the, the white uh, parts, and, and they're organized into bigger, bigger structure. So it's kind of very uh, systematic uh, hierarchical structure. The model for segmentation are, are known. So the idea is to use this to, to try to make like automated. Uh, I describe the, the data. I describe the, the, the segmentation. Do this automatically, eventually optimize. Uh, so there are a lot of things to do. And also for the diagnostic, the, the physician, they are very organized. They have uh, the grading is uh, the number of this next to this. So everything is here. Just we need to convert all this uh, literature into a program, into, uh, uh, in, in, into protocols. The test uh, case number two, maybe uh, uh, longer term, spatial transcriptomic. So it's a uh, multiplexing, but on top of this, you add some uh, over uh, heterogeneous data. You have you add over biochemical uh, data, like uh, RNA expression. So can we put this into the database and do more analysis? Uh, with the imaging and also the biochemical uh, data. So, of course, we may need a bit more of uh, data mining and uh, uh, machine learning. I'm going too fast or no? That's nice. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, the idea of the research project, actually, I just wrote this when I was doing this presentation. So, of course, I would like to improve and add new measurement because uh, maybe not all the measurements are right turn, maybe can be improved. So the first thing is to automate, since we have everything, so my idea is like uh, describe what you have and the, the writing of the protocol should be kind of automatic because it's almost all the time we are doing the same thing. <laughs> so, so basically, I would like uh, a computer to do my job. I would like uh, AI to write and run the pipelines because I say, okay, I have a... I have this, the nuclei inside, I have the cells. I describe the thing. I want to measure the distance between this, this nuclei and this cell. It's, if everything is nicely described, the automation of the pipeline should be automatic. So this is more or less what I would like to do in the future, make it uh, to what, so first we need to, to be more, uh, the description of the data on the pipeline will be more precise, so to help us to automize more and more to help the biologists uh, uh, to do do more without uh, without us, but we still have a lot of things to do. Okay, thank you.